This is Andy Puroff, the Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to be joined by George Cambosos Jr. George, I hope you're well, but I, we have to kind of react to what we've just seen. Um, a, a scuffle, a, a clash, however you want to phrase it. Obviously, we just see Tifimo Lopez Sr. come and clash with your team. Can you just explain what actually happened? A lot of nervous energy, a lot of fear. We are here ready to uh, do our media work for the fans, for the media, the reporters that have stood by this spot for a long time, for many months. And all of a sudden, that, that nervous energy from uh, Senior wants to come running around and come to our section and try to go head to head with us. Well, he got in, put in this place real quick. He, he knows that we don't, we don't uh, play around. We are here ready, ready for war, we are ready to fight. And uh, just like he tucked his tail real quick and got out of there, well, it's going to be the same on Saturday night. Do you know who he was out of? Well, I assume you will know who was out of your team who did clash with uh, Senior. My father. Like I said many times, that if he wants to get it on, you know, my father's here too. So uh, we all saw it. What did he do? He was lucky that my uh, father didn't really unleash, or else he wouldn't have him in his corner on uh, Saturday night. Chance of getting on the undercard? On the undercard? Well, uh, if, if Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, they pay enough money for the, uh, the old fellas to go at it, then uh, I'm sure that they'll do it. But... Um, Maybe, maybe we'll step outside and we'll see it either way in a dark alley. I'm sure we're up for it. We don't care. Away from what happened there, just talk to me about your camp, George. How have you felt? It's been a very long one. Um, it's been, it's, it's been talked about for many months. It's been agreed, was meant to take place months ago, and it's kept being pushed back for various reasons. But now you're here. How does it feel to only be a few weeks away? And how has your camp gone for this period? Yeah, look, um, they say it's been a long camp, but I'm always in the gym. I'm always preparing. I'm always training. I live in the gym. You know, I, I, I don't take a day off from the gym so you know this has just been day by day and you know, I stayed focused kept that tunnel vision when you're fighting for all the jury all the marbles are you going to take your foot off the off the pedal no nah. so um, I stayed focused kept my tunnel vision and been very patient we're here now one thing people talk about is when you have fights being pushed back it's go away maybe have a week or two off and get back into the gym you've got to be careful not to burn yourself out how did you manage that to make sure that you didn't kind of just push yourself too much throughout camp so you can peak for Saturday night I've got a very smart team and I'm, I'm very smart at what I do so I'm not my first rodeo, I've been in the big fights and you know, I've, I've had to really earn it the hard way. So, um, you know, there was times where I was smart, always in the gym, always getting better, but working on certain things, pulling back on certain things. And uh, we are ready, we are ready. There is no burnt out, there is no weight issues, there is no nothing, there is no emotion. We are just coming to, to win this fight and take them belts and be a real champion. TV Mo said to me earlier before but everything that just happened, it is personal for him because of the back and forth you guys have had over the months. Is this personal for you? No, it's not personal for me. And uh, whatever delusional story he has in his head when he wasn't even there June 19th, they're just lying to him. They lie to him and they just tell him what he wants to hear and, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm focused. Even what happened just there, I forgot about it. There is no emotion for me. I'm coming to do a job. He said he wants to come at you early. He wants to try and stop you early. Just get your thoughts on that. No problem. I'm coming to stop him early too. So how do you expect the fight to play? I know you've just said you're coming to stop him early, but in your mind, how does it play out? Victory by any means. Victory by any means. What would it mean for you to lift those world titles on Saturday night, George? It would mean, it mean the war, but all the hard work, all the sacrifice that I've had to make, that's, that's what's going to be special. At the end of the day, it's, it's for the people around me and my kids and my family. You know, the belts are, are going to be something special for them. I mean, if you are successful, what next? Have you thought about who could be next? Not even thinking that far. You know, if you want to ask Lopez, because he'll think, he'll think a million steps ahead, I'm focused on him. That's what I was going to ask. Obviously, TFMO has spoken openly once Josh Taylor. Be your thoughts on his, him saying he wants to face Josh? Yeah, we'll see if Josh Taylor gives him a, gives him a fight without any belts or any uh, you know, coming off a loss to the Aussie. So, um, yeah, whatever. That doesn't bother me. I'm focused on what I've got to do. Right, George, I just want two things from you before I let you go. Firstly, a message to the fans back in Australia who can't obviously be here. What would you like to say to them? Look, we do have a bit of support here in, from Australia, but uh, all the fans you know, supporting me and behind me, I feel your love, I feel your support, and uh, we're ready to win these belts and bring them back home. And finally, a message to TV Mike Lopez ahead of Saturday night. Just be there. Just be there. George, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, George.